Uh, Sean O'Malley comes through as the minus 290 betting favorite. First round TKO over Raleigh and Pava. Uh, O'Malley by TKO cashes at plus 120 inside the distance, plus 110. Uh, the under two and a half rounds came through in minus 115. And fight goes the distance, no, minus 150. Uh, Lucky Locks, did you have anything on this one? What did you think? I had nothing on this fight, but I thought O'Malley looked great. Um, I think the guy's for real. I know that a lot of people don't want to hear that. Um, I think his striking is, is excellent. It's almost like the cliche to say that Sean O'Malley has slick striking. He's so slick. Everybody says that. But, you know, it's true. Um, and he lands at a very high percentage. I believe his striking accuracy is like, over 60% in the UFC. He's also really damn hard to hit. I mean, he can fight off his back foot pretty well. He's got great footwork, gets to his spots. He likes to keep the distance with that front kick and just super tall and long for the weight class. I mean, Al, you were saying before uh, off camera that you feel like he uh, might be a little taller than what they list him at, right? So uh, he definitely looks tall. He looks super long. I think he has, you know, pretty underrated jujitsu. We pretty much never see it, but uh, he's a brown belt, I believe. And uh, yeah, Paiva only landed 23% of his strikes in this match. I mean, O'Malley's just a hard guy to hit. I kind of like the guy. Um, I really like to watch him fight. I think a lot of the uh, the trolling stuff is actually pretty funny most of the time. People get pretty upset, which kind of makes it even a little bit funnier uh, to me. And, yeah, I don't think O'Malley really looked like he was in danger at all in this one. And I think that he is a legit top 15 guy um, in the most stacked division in the UFC, in my opinion. And I'm not saying he's going to be champ or he's going to wax everybody in the top 10 or anything like that. But I think, could he be in the title conversation one day? Absolutely. Um, and the guy clearly is a big draw. I mean, all my friends that uh, don't watch MMA or text me today, ask me when O'Malley's fighting, they want to watch the fight. So uh, yeah, it was a good fight. It was, it was a good watch. It was entertaining. And uh, I thought O'Malley looked really good and this sets him up for uh, even more momentum and uh, to do even more in the future. So I'm excited to see kind of, who they're going to give him next. Al, I know you mentioned Pedro Munoz off camera, and I think that would be a cool matchup to see. And a lot of different things they could do with him. So I'm interested kind of to see the direction that they choose to go here. Yeah, I think Munoz, uh, Munoz is a good one. Uh, Liam, I think that this for us, uh, at least for me, uh, is me overrating Pava and underrating O'Malley. What did you think about this fight, and did you have anything on it? Yeah, man. So I did end up getting to the window with a with a paver bet uh, for one unit, and you know, do I feel good about the bet? No. Do I hate the bet? I honestly would say no. You know, I feel like O'Malley maximized his win condition here. Uh, not to say he couldn't have picked him apart for the whole fifteen minutes, but my bet was like predicated on Paiva taking over the fight as it went on. You know, I kind of thought he was going to have a rough first round. O'Malley's very accurate. Paiva is like recklessly come forward in his offense. Uh, and I thought that over the course of the fight, that would bother O'Malley. You know, he likes to get off early in his fights and have a lot of success. And I thought that, you know, he just did tonight. And so I didn't get uh, to see, you know, some of the elements of his game I wanted to see tested, tested here. Uh, so Paiva is not the right guy, obviously. Um, but I do think that, you know, I'm not going to be sold on O'Malley at a similar price against somebody that could wrestle, somebody that could grapple, somebody that could answer some of these shots on the feet. You know, I think he has had a little bit of a softer run through the UFC. I'm impressed with how he dealt with Paiva tonight. I don't think Paiva is a bad fighter, but he is like a 500 UFC fighter. I just thought that he was like one of the tougher guys that O'Malley had been matched up with. And so O'Malley, you know, shows to me a little bit better power than I thought he was going to have tonight. But outside of that, you know, everything was on point from him. Shot selection was good. Really nice finishing sequence against the cage. Uh, so nothing to complain about. But I thought he did a lot of what I knew he could do. Uh, I'd like to see more from his game and a little bit later, uh, you know, maybe a three to five round fight from him uh, is important in his development, I think. So let's see what's next for Sean. But impressive win for him. Yeah, uh, I, I'm. I would say that I'm definitely. I've been like a doubter of this guy from the very beginning, and I definitely have to say that tonight kind of you know skewed those doubts a little bit. But just uh, you know to be critical of Pava, he looked he looked off tonight compared to other nights. Uh, him leaving his hands down against a guy like O'Malley just right off the hop is a bad move because O'Malley was so fast and then especially straight up the middle. He was eating that jab straight up the middle. And, yeah, we talked about it off camera. O'Malley's so tall for the division. 
he claims to be 5'11", but I think for sure he's six feet tall. And uh, I didn't think that Pava is going to be easily easily dropped. Uh, I thought he had a, was going to have a bit more of a chin on him. I guess that may be more of an indictment of Kyler Phillips. And, yeah, I think of one thing that we didn't mention, uh, O'Malley definitely has gotten better at finishing once he notices that his opponent is hurt. Uh, he wasn't just winging shots. He started changing it up and going to the body and then switching, going straight up the middle underneath. Uh, I think really nice performance. I thought Pava was going to have a little bit more in him, and uh, I was wrong, and it is what it is. If people if people want to relish over O'Malley you know, fighting unranked bantamweights on the opening of uh, every pay-per-view, I think that's all right. I'm cool with it because this was entertaining. It was a cool finish. And I think that if we keep, you know, this is how they're doing like the Bellator route with uh, with O'Malley. And I think, you know, th- I think that's a good thing. But uh, yeah, as far as matches go, I would say possibly Song Yadong. And if not, I, Pedro Munoz might honestly be too much of a step up because he's, he's a top 10 guy right now, even this loss against Cruz I think he would still be uh, um, top 10 at the very least so I, don't, I think that might he might be too much of a step up I think Song Yudong uh, might be a good one or you could p- potentially do Frankie Edgar but Frankie's had a rough go so I don't know <laughs> Frankie Edgar m- might want to have a win uh, yeah th- that one was interesting but